In October of 2010, Fallout New Vegas was published by Obsidian Entertainment, and in the matter of a single, sleepless weekend, it quickly became my favorite game of all time. I instantly fell in love with its expansive, reactive world, clever, often hilarious writing, fascinating lore, and a glorious return to the series' roots. Simultaneously, there were many parts of New Vegas that were hard to love. Between the long loading times, crippling frame rate drops, numerous game-breaking bugs and crashes, it was difficult not to see the cracks, particularly if you played it pre-patch. While Obsidian had released bug-filled games in the past like Alpha Protocol and Knights of the Old Republic 2, many of New Vegas' issues were caused by a short, 18-month development cycle, which is very little considering the vast scope of the game. It's even less when you add in that quests often had multiple ways of being solved, along with multiple endings and vast trees of branching dialogue that span over 65,000 lines. The short development time was further exasperated by Obsidian's complete unfamiliarity with the game Biro engine. In fact, only a single member of Obsidian's development team had any experience with game Biro, George Salgado, a modder who had previously created the Obscuro Oblivion overhaul mod, which remains as one of the most beloved and downloaded Elder Scrolls mods ever created. But to my knowledge, he didn't join the Obsidian team until after production on New Vegas had already begun. While the aforementioned issues, as well as the technical restraints of the current generation of consoles, the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, caused bugs, crashes, and performance issues, the real tragedy of New Vegas is just how much content had to be cut from the final product. In many cases, NPCs, companions, and quests, weapons, armor, animation, music, locations, perks, and items were left either uncompleted or unimplemented. While in other cases, specifically due to technical restraints, visual effects, NPCs, and environmental clutter were either disabled or patched out, and many areas of New Vegas' world space were lessened in scope. In an interview with New Vegas' lead world builder, Scott Everett had this to say, New Vegas would have been a lot different if it was PC only. We had a lot of plans early on, like, here's where the water is stored, here's where the farms are. Here's where the government is centralized. We had it all planned out. It wasn't just a bunch of random stuff. Everett's continues, suggesting that certain things that did make it into the final release had to be parred down, and that the Mojave Wasteland itself would have looked different in the end, with more separate zones and a big wall around the whole thing. In this series, we'll be taking a look at New Vegas's cut content by examining the game's files with the GEC, footage and images of early game builds, concept art, the collector's edition strategy guide, and interviews with Obsidian staff, which together tell a story that the final release was in many ways a mere shadow of the development team's ambitious vision. Before we get started, I want to give credit to the modder Moburma80. He discovered much of this information years ago, and has even restored parts of the game's cut content. You can find links to his pages below. So without further ado, we're going in-depth into the Mojave to discover what could have been. Welcome to Fallout New Vegas, The Cutting Room 4. From where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. I used Imperial Rome as the model for my legion precisely because it was so foreign, so alien. I'd seen what had become of the NCR's attempts to emulate the culture of pre-war America, the infighting, the corruption. Rome was a highly militarized autocracy that effectively integrated the foreign cultures it conquered. It dedicated its citizens to something higher than themselves, to the idea of Rome itself. In Rome, I found a template for a society equal to the challenges of the post-apocalyptic world, a society that could and would survive, 
A society that can prevent mankind from fracturing and destroying itself in this new world by establishing a new Pax Romana. Caesar's Legion, like many other aspects of New Vegas, was recycled from Project Van Buren. What would have been Fallout 3 before financial issues caused Fallout's original publisher, Black Isle, to cancel it. Ironically, the Legion was recycled from a canceled game, and a large portion of their content was in turn cut from New Vegas due to time restraints. As a direct result, the Legion is undoubtedly one of the weakest aspects of the game. Particularly when compared to their counterpart, the NCR, the Legion has notably fewer locations, NPCs, and quests. However, there was a substantial amount of planned Legion content that never made it off the cutting room floor. Inside Takata Cut Mine, you can find a Legion Decanus named Alexis. Ironically, he has 10 charisma, the highest in the entire Legion, and yet he has no unique dialogue, only the generic Legion greetings. There are several clues that he was planned to be a much more important character, however. First, he's mentioned in the official strategy guide, which was based off of an unfinished build of the game. In it, it references it would have been possible to convince him to free the NCR prisoners. Second, he appears alongside Legion Decanus Dead Sea in the Collector's Edition card set, which also reveals his only known line of dialogue. Finally, several lines of player dialogue remain from the conversation with him. One of these lines in particular, I want one of their heads, Suggest you could have brought a decapitated head to Private Reynolds, a nearby NCR soldier who quests the player to save the hostages. There appear to be several attempts to create a post-event state in Camp Forlorn Hope. In the graveyard, there's a marker, VCFH Dead Bodies Marker, that spawns a mass grave of NCR soldiers. It doesn't have a trigger, so it never occurs in-game, but presumably this would have happened after completing the quest We Are Legion, which tasked the player in killing the NCR officers at the camp. Caesar actually mentions this in his dialogue, but I never noticed it until making this video. You turn Camp Forlorn Hope into a mass grave. VCFH Critter's Marker reference implies that after the Legion killed the remaining NCR forces and dumped them into the mass grave, they would have, for whatever reason, abandoned the camp. At this point, it would have been overrun by cast members. In the original release, you could find disfigured NCR troopers in the space between Camp Forlorn Hope and Nelson, but a patch actually deleted them from the game. Random battles would also occur where NCR or Legion troops would spawn and assault the opposing base, but due to console memory use, these were disabled during a later patch. Legion explorers are supposed to provide a plus two perception bonus, to all nearby Legion members. The concept being that the explorers were using their scouting ability to spot enemies and then relaying that information back to their allies. This would have worked by them carrying an item called Aura Token. In the GEC, this item appears to be a pair of sunglasses, but they aren't visible when equipped. Crandon in Westside has it in his inventory for some unknown reason. But then I realized that he was clearly a Legion spy, who needed to die. But then I remembered I'm only level 4, so I'll let it go for now. The token doesn't do anything since it only affects members of the Legion, and even if there were Legion members around, the Aura token doesn't actually work properly anyway. It's likely that this was abandoned because of time constraints. The item script contains the following note. This script runs on an unplayable token in Legion Explorer's inventory. I place this in game mode code in an item so not to run the script on the actor entity. The token merely kicks in in a timer that when appropriate makes the Legion Explorer's reference cast on itself an area of effect touch base spell. This area of effect spell is responsible for applying the aura effects on nearby Legion allies. This unused message suggests that it would have been possible to create white phosphorus shells for the howitzer at the fort. There's no other remaining information, so it's unknown if you simply would have had to pass an explosive check with the correct items in your inventory, or if it would have been a minor quest where you had to recover the shell schematics out of the wasteland. Presumably, this would have had an effect during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam had it been implemented. This technically isn't cut New Vegas content, and it almost certainly was never going to be possible to include working vehicles in New Vegas. 
but concept art from Van Buren depicts what Legion chariots might have looked like had it been possible to include them. The Mesmetron is a weapon from Fallout 3, which allowed the player to enslave NPCs in the Capital Wasteland. While the gun isn't in the game files, many New Vegas NPCs are a part of the faction. MS-13 can be mezzed with Mesmetron. This implies that it was planned to allow the player to enslave many of the characters in the game during a Legion playthrough, and would have allowed you to roleplay as a slaver. And this wouldn't have been the first time this was possible in a Fallout game. In Fallout 2, you could become a slaver, capturing and selling tribals for money, but at a high price. Many characters became instantly hostile as a result, and had slavery been implemented in New Vegas, this likely would have been the case as well. A cut script, V. Nipton Legion Caravan Travel, appears to suggest that there would have been a caravan transporting slaves from Nipton to one of the Legion camps, likely Cottonwood Cove or the fort. This is entirely speculation, but had slavery been included, it seems possible you would have sold captured slaves to the Officio Ab Famulatus. Pardon me for butchering that, my Latin is non-existent. This division of the Legion is only referenced once in-game, during the quest, One for My Baby. The note Bill of Sale explains that this division of the Legion is dedicated specifically to the procurement and payment of slaves. And that's all for part one of our look on the Legion's cut content. In the next episode, we'll be digging in and looking at the Legion's cut settlements, companions, and quests. Thanks for watching, and like and subscribe for more content like this.